As a real estate investor, as somebody who has bought a lot of homes over the years and renovated and flipped them and sold them, like this is the classic home that you would want to purchase. I'm here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This is on the West View side of Pittsburgh. This is what you would consider a typical middle class neighborhood. Uh, really awesome. If you've ever been to Pittsburgh, you know that the homes that are older, 1930s and 40s, have a different flavor and style on every home down the neighborhood. It's really cool because everything is a little bit different. Nothing's the same. And uh, yeah, so I want to sh show you this home and what things you should look for when you're trying to negotiate the price on it. Now, again, we're in a pretty hot environment for a seller. It's a seller's market. They're basically getting more than what they're asking for in a lot of cases. In this particular home, this is 1,500 square feet, three bedroom. I think it's one and a half bath. And we'll have to check that out. Uh, and they're asking 150,000. They're already asking for best in uh, the final and best offer in a couple of days because they've got multiple offers. So it's kind of surprising. So it's gonna probably go above that, but I'm gonna show you what kind of renovations are needed in here. And specifically when it comes to the bathroom because the bathrooms in these old homes you don't want to buy something without knowing the condition of it. And you can't even rely on the home inspector to really highlight the issues. I always feel bad as a bathroom remodeler. I've been doing Pittsburgh homes here for over 20 years. And it's appalling at how bad some of the bathrooms are when it comes to the plumbing infrastructure, the electrical, and then basically a lot of the quick rehabs people have done to make it look good, but you're still uncovered over you know, basically setting stuff over a bad foundation and a bad plumbing job. So you have to be aware of what it takes to renovate something like this. And if you can do it yourself, you're gonna be in such a better negotiating power to be able to do so. Not only that, you're gonna get something that's gonna last years to come and you, you'll be able to budget your own lifestyle off of that. So let's get into this home. I'm gonna check, point out some features that you wanna be able to negotiate on. And then when it comes to the bathroom, I wanna give you a whole bunch of details on the labor, materials, and then maybe what a contractor might charge to do something like this. All right, so we, I haven't even walked in here yet. Um, I saw the pictures online and I could tell that it probably looks pretty bad because it has some really old carpeting. But I, what I really loved first right off the bat was that it's a brick home. Um, you know, that's just a solid deal. You don't have, I mean, there's some painting that needs to be done. Um, if you were to get an FHA loan, I could tell you right now that they don't like any of this peeling painting paint right here. So this is something that would have to be addressed before you can even purchase it. So most likely you're not going to be able to get an FHA government loan for this home. Uh, there's too much competition. Most likely somebody's going to come in here and buy this cash. So if you're a, if you're a buyer that has an FHA or a VA loan, um, I'm not saying don't make the offer. I'm just saying most likely this is not going to qualify and they're not going to deal. They're, they're basically not going to get accepted for the offer based off of, you know, some of the things that are wrong. So when you're looking at a home and you have that kind of loan, you have to pay attention to the peeling paint. You have to pay attention to the, the, the core problems that those lenders are going to have a problem uh, selling you on. But let's just check it out. This is a very typical standard size home. Woo. And that, smell? boy, that stinks bad. They must've had a lot of dogs in here. You can see the carpet is all stained. Dang. Oh, but it does have a fireplace. It does have a fireplace. These are all plaster walls. So this is probably, I have to look up the, the time frame, but I'm betting you this is 1940s. Go look at the arched doorways too. Arch doorways, that's yeah, cool. That's also a classic Pittsburgh. Yep, classic deal and then the wood trim wood trim it's in good shape yeah well except for oh somebody somebody that scratched <laughs> oh that. that's i don't think that's scratch i think you can remove that's that talk. Okay. but the door is not nothing special so you got a, a double you got like a two-prong outlet here so this is most likely some old wiring. We'll go down in the basement, take a look, but they don't have any grounds on this. So most likely this is not a grounded outlet, which doesn't really work for most people's situation. Oh, look at the window. <gasps> look at the window. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it's nice. Um, I love the wood trim. 
Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Kitchen's really, uh, wow. <laughs> Look at all that peeling paint. What's going on? That's probably lead-based paint. Just peeling off of the, there must be moisture. My bet is the bathroom's above this. There's most likely moisture. I mean, unless this is an addition. No, I think that's, I guarantee it, the bathroom's most likely right above here. But why that's peeling like that, it's hard to say. Yeah, I mean, you know, you could probably, this is plaster as well, so you could still patch that. I mean, you'd be able to have to scrape everything off, but kitchen's. You missed the most important. <laughs> Could this really be real? Is this what it... Yeah, I think so. I think they just kept it, right? Yeah. Oh, wait, is it an intercom? No, I don't know. This Why is... don't you just have a string? <laughs> put your phone inside of there. It's just, they just put a box to make, put your phone in there. Oh my God, people probably lost their minds when they saw that. That's pretty it. cool. Yeah. Not a very big kitchen. What have we got? A nine. Probably nine by 10, nine by nine, yeah, so you're not. Honestly, that's all the space I yeah. need, but no, it's, it's not, not bad. bad. No, it's not. It doesn't feel tight in here. I like the room separation. No one painted the, the trim, which is nice. I mean, these doors are beautiful. They're freaking gorgeous. I mean, those are really nice looking doors. It's got the old the hardware. Knobs. Yeah, wait, let's, I appreciate that. I'm all about so that. you got hardwood down here, so you could definitely refinish this hardwood. Oh yeah. There's no question about that. So yeah, you can refinish the hardwood, put a new kitchen in. You know, that kitchen really isn't all that big. You know, I could no probably- way I would keep it that size. I wouldn't- Well, no, I, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, I, there's no, there's no, I mean, you, it wouldn't make, I mean, you could remove a wall, but you need a room for the fridge. So there's really no, Yeah. What would you do with that? If I was flipping it, nothing. If you and I were living here. Yeah, I'd just put a regular window, get a regular double hung window in there. But all these little cracks and stuff, you can finish all of that. This is really this easy. Really isn't that bad. No, it's just an easy paint job. Guarantee there's hardwood underneath these steps too that you can just refinish. I mean, this really is like the classic flip home that you would want. Because it's mostly fairly easy work. I'm, I guarantee there's hardwood floor underneath all of this as well. Oh, wow. Okay. So, nice size bedroom. Yeah. I mean, I'm so, sadly, somebody painted that. I don't know why they would do that. You could get that dipped, though. <laughs> yeah, maybe. It'd be a hard one. Yeah. You could dip it and then restain it. I don't know enough about the the. the the stripping, but you're right. I feel it's almost a shame to keep one door white. Like, um, you would have to, that's what I would do. Yeah, so you see, you got hardwood underneath they, here. They painted the trim, and all the hardwood underneath here is still too. Decent sized closet. I'm guessing this would be considered like the master. Um, How big is we're gonna go down in the basement to check out the wiring, but you still have all these two prong outlets. You're most likely gonna have to rewire the house. Everything is gonna to have to be updated to new Romex. Um, it's hard to say what this wiring is. We'll have to go down in the basement and check it out, but I'd probably just refigure, you know, running all new electric for here. Look at the, the ceiling detail. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty ugly. It is ugly, but they try. Yeah. So here's another, another bedroom, but no, Closet. There's no closet in here. No, it's kind of weird. So what I've done in the past on something like this is just to build a closet here. You know, I, I mean, I guess you could technically do it over here too. I mean, 29 inches, but you wouldn't really want to crowd the look of that window. But even the windows, I mean, they're. They're not great, but they're they're functional. It's got like a new roof out there. Hmm. 
So this would be just a quick paint job, refinished hardwood floors. Put in a closet. Put in a closet. And then here's the third bedroom. I guess you can consider this an office as well. This could be an office or a nursery. You can, I mean, this is a, 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 an actual third bedroom for sure. But this is another quick, easy one. Is that access to the attic up there? No. I think they actually, this door here is for the attic. I don't, this is like giving me Methyl Street vibes. Oh, no, this is just a closet. But there is access to the attic up here. So that's how you have access you to the edge. Can you on the light in there? It's really big, just to show how big it is. No, there's no light in here. Should have a light. <laughs> it's a big closet. Nice hardwood in there, though. Yep. I don't think you can see it. No, so probably dark. not. Yeah, that's a really big closet. You so honestly, I mean, there isn't, you know, there's, there's sweat equity here. I mean, there's sweat, you know, there's a lot of labor put into this, but so far it's, it's very, achievable for anybody to redo this at this point. So now here's the bathroom. Now this is the part that... This is above the kitchen. Yeah, it is above the kitchen, yep. So you got your... This is a nice size bathroom though. I mean, this is a decent... This is a really nice size bathroom. I like the layout actually. So you got almost 10 foot. It is 10 foot. 10 foot by seven foot. Very, very nice sized shower. No, I, I mean, I mean, this is totally, this is really not a bad size at all. With 10 foot, um, you can almost do a walk-in shower and a, if you really want to get high end, you can do a claw foot or like a freestanding tub and a walk-in shower. It's still going to be a little bit crammed. It'll be a little bit small. Um, but honestly, this layout is not bad. I don't object to this at all. You've got plenty of storage. This is like, what, a four foot vanity? Oh, 54 inch. So four foot six. I mean, and technically, what's, what, what is all this space here? I mean, you can really build yourself out like a 72 inch vanity and have all of this cabinetry. You know, the toilet is where it's at. I mean, this is not a bad layout all, overall. So whether you want to do a, a tub and shower or do a walk-in shower, you have a lot of options to that. Now I will say, you want to take a look at what kind of plumbing you actually have. So there's no trap adapter there. It's just kind of sitting into the thing. So I guarantee that probably leaks or is going to be a problem. So I would not, you know, any home inspector is probably going to point that out as well. I can't imagine this not leaking, but I, I'm still, I'm not sure exactly. I would imagine it's copper. We'll go down in the basement to see what kind that is. Um, and the drain line, it could be, it could be uh, copper as well, but I'm not going to know that at this point. It doesn't seem to be any access to the tub either. This is not GFI protected. Most likely this is not dedicated circuit either. So you would have to, you know, when you're doing new electrical, you want to run a new wire. I would run two new wires up to this bathroom, one for all the lighting and the fan, and then one for the actual dedicated GFI. Um, it's really hard to say what kind of, so you have Romex, this is a Romex line. So you do have your ground, uh, it might not have ground on it though. No, you do have a ground on that, but that doesn't, just because they have it in the light fixture doesn't mean that this is connected to something that is good wiring. So, I mean, seeing Romex is a good sign. Can we talk about the moisture issues in here? Because yeah, this I mean, this, I guarantee this vent fan doesn't really work at all. Here we go over there. Yeah, it's really not doing anything. I don't even feel any. So this just vent fan just doesn't work. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that would have a lot to do with the cracking of the ceiling. There's just too much moisture in here. And I never really did like having bulkheads above the shower. Why? 
because it just holds the moisture down and this you know you can even see how there's signs of dripping here so most likely there was water dripping out of here when you're taking a shower and really it's i mean it's pretty low i mean i'd have to be ducking you also have a three-handled uh faucet here they have the water turned off so i can't even tell whether it works or not my assumption is you know when you see an old home like this I mean, all of this is going to be a problem. They put this little side splash thing on here. That tells me that water is dripping over and leaking. You know, they can see all this big nasty caulk joint here. So they have water issues leaking through the subfloor. I would be willing to bet it doesn't feel soft, but I guarantee when you pull this tub out, all of this is probably fairly rotten. Um, you know, as far as whether the tub actually drains well, I don't know. Uh, there's two different ways that they could have done that. They could have a regular P trap, which is probably unlikely. They probably have a drum trap. <clears throat> and those things are notoriously slow for drainage. Man, whatever the smell in the, I think it's mold too. Mm -hmm. That's in my throat. Um, anyways, one good sign that I see so far though, is that this isn't completely soft. So, you know, this probably wasn't leaking terribly, but you have missing grout joints, you know, and, and when you look at something like this, you know, you, you really can't expect that this is going to last like another 10 years. I mean, when you're purchasing a home, hopefully at this point with the high interest rates, you're planning on living there for a while. Uh, but you really need to know like what you're in for when it comes to replacing something like this. Now, the one thing I, you know, you're going to have to redesign a little bit is that this is only a 30 inch tub. So this is not a very big tub. And one thing I don't like is how the partition wall meets directly right up to the tub. What I would traditionally do is bump this out a little bit more so that you actually have space. And I guess I'm mentioning that because most people want a tub that they can actually use as an adult. These types of tubs, they're only 15 inches deep. They're really just for little kids. I mean, they're not, you're not gonna get a real bath in here. Uh, so if you want to actually a deep soaking tub like most people want, you're going to need a little bit more space here. I mean, they literally only have 30 inches to the edge of this wall. So I would bring this wall out just a slightly a little bit more, or you could really redesign the bathroom. But at the point of renovating this bathroom, you pretty much are going to have all those options. You're just going to have more plumbing work if you want to rearrange the bathroom. But as far as expense goes, it's probably most likely not going to, you know, as a DIYer, not going to cost a lot more to re lay out the bathroom because I would gut this entire bathroom all the way down to the studs route. You know, you don't even have a light above the shower. So at night, it's probably really dark in this shower. Um, not that you couldn't add a light to that existing thing, but I'd be really hesitant to add any other additional circuits in an older home like this. You just really want to update the bathroom. So, uh, so yeah, I would definitely gut the entire bathroom all the way down to the studs, run new electrical, inspect all the plumbing. If it's copper, it's, you know, you really have to evaluate the entire copper line because a lot of times when there's slow draining tub drains or sink faucets, people love to pour Drano down it. And if Drano sits in a copper line, it eventually eats away at it. And it's very thin on the bottom section of the copper and so it can look very good from first appearance but you have to make sure that it's actually um, not rotten through on the bottom sides of the copper but when you open all of this up i mean it really is best to just re-plumb this bathroom so as far as evaluating a bathroom i would plan on running new horizontal lines for your fixtures uh, get rid of the copper water supplies and use pex so, you know, you, a lot of times, especially in this scenario, you have your toilet and you have a vent stack that you could end up running new lines down to the basement. So you can run new PEX lines, water supplies, and then you can also run uh, your electrical lines through that easy pathway through the kitchen. Um, and so that will take care of any leaking issues in the future because you're going to be running all new plumbing fixtures and the horizontal i mainly say just replacing the horizontal surfaces because that's where all the rotting of copper or cast iron kind of corrodes and all the fittings but a lot of the vertical stacks you know they can last another 100 years 
because there isn't any water or anything sitting on those drain lines and rusting them away. Uh, obviously you want to check your cast iron lines when you tear out this bathroom. Make sure that we're going to see them on the basement whether they're still in good condition. But a lot of times it's just the horizontal plumbing. Everything that's being connected to the tub or the sink, that's usually the issue. You also might have some venting issues. It's hard to say whether the vanity was vented properly. So this could be slow draining as well. But you'll be able to address that when you run new plumbing. Now, a couple of uh, good things about this bathroom is that this is newer construction in a sense. I mean, this is probably 1950s. I have to look at the age of the home, but you can see how thin the tile layer is. So this is literally just set right over plaster. So this is going to be an easy demo job to remove this entire wainscoting and including uh, the tub area as well. So, uh, this is most likely all plaster walls, plaster ceiling. Uh, again, it's going to be a very easy demo process. Uh, the subfloor is vinyl. There could be tile underneath of this. It's really hard to say. Uh, but if even if there is, it's most likely over plywood. So it's going to be an easy demo job to remove that. <clears throat> Definitely check out my videos on some older 1930s bathrooms where they have a mud set walls where the walls actually bump out of the wall about an inch and a half. And that means that the entire bathroom is all mortar set tile. So it's a very, very labor intensive demo process to remove that and you have a lot of additional framing issues. Um, I don't have a level in here, but the bathroom does seem fairly level. Uh, so, you know, ultimately this would be a pretty basic bathroom. I'll go, I'll go through some of the items on what the estimation process would be, but this would be, for me, would be a two week uh, remodel job. And I, I'll highlight my pattern on how I would go about doing that. I'll leave a link below for like a contractor's estimate of this bathroom. Now we're not gonna change the layout. I'm gonna actually leave it the same because I don't really think this is a bad layout. You'd actually have some really great storage here. You could actually get a cabinet here as well, right next to the toilet for additional pantry items. So I think that's really nice. Now, whether you wanna go with a walk-in shower or a tub and just redo what's here, um, that might make a lot of sense. Obviously a tub and tub surround is a little less expensive doing than doing a tiled walk-in shower. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of the features I would be doing here wouldn't be really tremendously changing the layout. Uh, but I'll leave a contractor's quote down below on this, but two weeks labor, probably $10,000 worth of material and then um, I'll give you an estimate of what I would charge for something like this down below. But let's go down to the basement. Let's take a better look at the wiring and let's take a look at the main way stack as well. Really smells moldy down here. Oh yeah, air freshener cover up. And it looks like they, they framed over the subfloor. So this whole subfloor is probably moldy and rotten. There's an old Pittsburgh toilet. Yeah, so you got some of the plumbing down so here. That's the half bathroom. <laughs> I guess it is. Oh my goodness. So oh, we got uh, we got galvanized piping. This is a vent for the galvanized. So that's not good. You would want to replace anything galvanized. Why? Because it just rusts away and it clogs very easily. Wow, they put a whole new. Plum, looks like they even have a new copper sleeve in here. They redid the whole entire water line coming in here. So where is the main waste stack? Huh. I'm not really seeing it. it. Should be right here. It's an old furnace. Definitely need to replace that. <clears throat> the hot water tank is 2000, so that's 24 years old. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of work here for sure. A lot of money that needs to go into it, huh? So, I mean, this is all like new Romex wire, not new, but Romex wiring. Um, so here's, here's a sign of <clears throat> some of the plumbing here. This is cast iron right here. This is for this uh, laundry sink here. 
and it has galvanized coming out of there. So that's, that's, you know, this would all have to be replaced or you want it to be replaced. I just don't know where the main way stack is. It must be in. Oh, so this is the old <laughs> electrical panel. Wow. So yeah, you want to update this. So yeah, this is, I mean, it's got some new Romex wiring. We've got the old fuse box. So maybe the electrical isn't terrible, but I would still run a, a dedicated GFI because they just, they just don't have everything sparsed out. And then when you redo the kitchen, you're going to want to redo that as well run all new wiring for the kitchen. It's hard to say. I can't really find that waste stack, unfortunately. It's gotta be. The backyard needs work. There's no air conditioning in this house either. I think it does have a detached garage though. Yeah. No, I mean. It's old, it's old cast iron and galvanized piping. So unfortunately that's just going to be a gray area that makes it harder for me to evaluate. And as a contractor, I would leave in my quote saying, I need to inspect the vertical stack and it, it might cost X amount of dollars to replace that as well. So that can be a real problem. Um, I certainly wouldn't buy this house. I mean, they're, they're asking for offers and everything's turned off. So you can't even check. You know, you want to make sure that when you're submitting an offer that you want inspections and you want to be able to tell, you know, if things are actually draining or not. But who knows how long this has actually been sitting vacant. So there's a lot of questions here. I mean, I, I would probably just evaluate that you're going to run all new plumbing down to the basement. Now, what the inspection point from underground is, it's really, really hard to say. And that could cost you quite a bit, but you can get insurance on your sewer line going from your home to your main street. And I would probably purchase that just in case something went wrong there. So make sure you get insurance on your sewage lines that go from your home to your outside. As far as the interior stuff, I would just account for replacing it. So making sure that you have, you know, a good five to $6,000 to replace your stack going to that main bathroom. Now, the one good thing is, is that that bathroom is basically has a dedicated stack to it. Um, other than the kitchen, sink faucet so it's going to be a three inch line that you'll be able to run up there's no other bathroom that it's connected to so that kind of makes it easy you know like as far as this old bathroom over here i mean that's just this is on the other side of the room but yeah i mean you got copper i mean all of that's just going to be it's hard to say how well that even works so a lot of question marks a lot of question marks and these are the things that you have to try to put some kind of number to for a worst case scenario of what it's going to take. But you know, you need a new furnace, you need a new hot water tank. One good thing is they have a new water line. You go, you could see that this is all brand new copper coming into the home. So, you know, you don't have any worries about that. Pittsburgh homes were notorious for having lead lines uh, and that they would, you know, basically break apart. So in seeing this makes me feel confident about, the water supply, you would just want to connect from here and run all new PECs to those fixtures, and that's not very expensive. So, just labor intensive. Just labor intensive. <laughs> no, I mean, like this basement, I would. You'd have to gut it. Yeah. You'd have to gut the whole thing. Well, the smells pretty bad. There's there's a lot of mold. Yeah, there's a lot of mold. This is all probably all moldy underneath of here. I wasn't expecting the basement to be finished like that. So let's just take a look outside here. I dipped it down too fast, but this feels really unsafe. If I were flipping this, I had to cut some of these tree branches. Probably get rid of that. That thing's just ugly, gnarly. Looks like the garage got a new roof though. Looks like the whole house got a new roof. Yeah. Got all that peeling paint. Like all of this, you wouldn't be able to get FHA approval on this. This it all has to be replaced before you purchased it. Lovely screen door. <laughs> oh, and a bird's nest. Yeah. Yeah, 
all right so that's the tour of this home um as you can see there's a lot of renovation here it could be very overwhelming for any new home buyer on something like this but i'm going to highlight and give you a contractor's quote below uh basically highlighting all the aspects of the bathroom that you would want to renovate and i'll give you some ticker points on you know maybe what it would cost to refinish this entire home there's a lot of gray areas here so you have to really be willing to take the risk to purchase something like this because you just don't know how involved the plumbing is going to be uh, as far as running a new line upstairs and the drainage out to the street but i would say that is going to be your biggest negotiation point is all of these gray areas and being able to highlight specifically what it's going to cost to do this and that really helps out with influence the influencing the real estate agent and and talking with the homeowner of what this home is worth and why you're coming up with your either lower figure or or how you're going to go about doing it but it's always about being the most qualified buyer and the more educated you are and the better at you're able to explain your situation and why uh, your prices are where they are. It really does go a long way and it gives people uh, confidence that you're not only an informed buyer, but you're serious and you're willing to follow through with it because getting into a contract with something like this with somebody, you have to know that that person is willing to actually take all of this on. If they want to have a home inspection of some sort, you know, that's going to just be, it's going to be a long red list showing everything that's wrong and that would scare a lot of people away. So if you're confident, you're able to explain yourself of why you're giving the estimate, you're gonna be a better buyer and be able to have a better chance of becoming a homeowner. So thanks so much and check out my courses. I will help you with bathroom remodeling and this is somewhere something that I can definitely help you save your time and money and most of all frustration. So take care and I'll see you in the next video.